I know we have choices about how we spend our time and what we do also with our practices. So I want to thank you for making the choice to be here and also encourage you to appreciate yourself for the choice you're making in your yoga, which is also the choice you're making in your well-being, which then becomes the choice you're making in your relationships. As you find yourself arriving, now begin to bring in the ujjayi breath. Again, just the subtle sound of the breath. You're likely going to be getting the news of the day from your inner body. If you let the breath be subtle, you get to hear the subtle news. If you make the breath too dynamic, you may override the information. Listen also for the pauses in your breath cycle. You can feel that which is moving, and that which is silent. And start imagining the part of the breath cycle that is silent. That is the backdrop on which the inhale and the exhale are being painted. Like the canvas on which the artist is placing the paint. Often when we look at a piece of art, a painting, for example, we look at the painting and we don't look at the canvas that was once the empty canvas before the painting. The empty canvas is like the open space, the unconditioned, the available, that which is receptive.
just having a consideration for that <clears throat> that element of us that is also not yet conditioned <laughs> hasn't been touched by conditioning isn't succumbing to the mental residue that on which our life is being painted uh, with consideration for that please bring your hands together at your heart we'll chant the gayatri mantra Om Arga Vasudhaya Atsavita Varenyam Arga Devasyadehi Ni Yoyona Prachodayata Om Narva Vasiva Atsavita Varenyam Argo Devasyadi Moyu Di Yoyona Prachodayata Om Narva Vasiva Atsavita Varenyam Argo Devasyadi Mohi Di Yoyona Prachodayata Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om With your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands. Open your eyes. There is a hummingbird in my midst. I know you can't see this off camera, but it came whizzing by. I don't know if you heard it as one of the sounds. Okay, so I'd like us to take one blanket this morning. And please take the blanket, fold it in half only once, lengthwise, like this, and then roll it. And then as you roll it, it's going to become like a little sleeping bag. You know, when you go camping, how you have to roll up your sleeping bag. Okay, so you've got this rolled neatly. We're going to kneel on this. So instead of a block, we're going to use the blanket. So place this on your mat and come to your asana. So you're kneeling on it. And when you kneel on it, kneel on the front edge of the blanket so that you don't have the pubic bone dropping down towards the blanket. So, and even if it did drop down, it wouldn't touch the blanket. You're sitting that far forward. So you can feel your sitting bones on either side of the blanket. And then momentarily close your eyes and bring your attention down to the place between the sitting bones. So you're breathing into the blanket itself. You might feel, because it's a blanket, you could feel the two sitting bones. And you may also feel the tailbone touching the blanket. When you breathe into the two sitting bones and the tailbone, imagine that you're widening the space between those bones, really inviting the back hemisphere of the pelvic floor to open a bit.
And during the exhale, imagine the front hemisphere of the pelvic floor is toning. So the exhale, you can begin at the pubic bone, move towards the perineum. And the inhale beginning at the perineum, moving back into the sitting bones and the tailbone. And you can repeat that cycle for each breath Let's do about five breath cycles like that. Remind yourself that the kind of attention, the consistency of attention that you give to your breath and your body is reparative for the parts of you that didn't have consistency of attention in times of need. Those parts of you that then became the unmet needs in the second chakra. So give the fullness of your attention to the breath sound and the breath sensations. This experience at the pelvic floor may seem subtle or unusual, but there is a power in it. One more time, imagine the exhale from the pubic bone to the perineum and the inhale from the perineum to the tailbone and the sitting bone. And then make your seat into Baddha Konasana on the same blanket. And I'm gonna recommend that you take your two blocks to place them under the knees. So then you won't feel like you're gonna fall off the blanket. Now, even if you do tip the pelvis a little bit forward on the blanket, you should not feel like the pubic bone is gonna to touch the blanket. And when you roll back, you will feel the tailbone touching the blanket. So as you're sitting up now, the two sitting bones are on either side of the blanket roll. And again, let's do the inhale so you can sense the back of the pelvic floor. Notice that the shape of the pelvic floor has changed when we've changed the position of the legs. Please hold on to your ankles now. And as you're inhaling into the back of the pelvic floor, lengthen up through the spine. And as you exhale from the pubic bone, draw in towards the tailbone, draw the deep low belly in, roll the sacrum backwards and come into your cat pose spine. And then inhale, roll up just to neutral, holding onto the ankles, make the spine really tall. And exhale, beginning at the pubic bone and roll into the lower belly towards your cat pose spine. You'll feel the tailbone on the blanket. Inhale, roll just up to your neutral spine, just upright. Hold the ankles, lengthen up through the crown of your skull. Continue with the pace of your own breathing. And then one more time, roll up to the neutral spine. Holding on to your feet, please come forward in your Baddha Konasana. And as you come forward, again, continue the breath in the back hemisphere of the pelvic floor. If it's within your body proportions, you can press the forearms against the inner thighs, press them out and down.
And notice now what happens when you breathe into the back of the pelvic floor here in the back of the sacrum. And how do you support the exhale and the front of the pelvic floor in Baddha Konasana? What is happening for you here? Let's roll back up to sitting and picking up another practice from yesterday. Hold at the top of your right foot. Walk your right hand around behind you and please twist to your right. Now, as you're twisting, because we folded the blanket, you do have a little bit of blanket behind you. Perhaps you can put your hand on that. For some of you, you might put your hand to the back side of that blanket near your left hip. And then your right shoulder is going to have a little bit more security to roll back. And as you've twisted, just check and see what's happening now for yourself in the sound of the breath, including the pauses, and in the tone of the pelvic floor. And then begin to side bend and back bend to your left. So raise your chest, raise your heart, raise your gaze, roll the right shoulder back. Place your left forearm on your left thigh. And when you feel ready to, raise your right arm up overhead. Press the right knee out and down, just using the hip muscles to do that. And then exhale, rise up to your seat into your twist again to the right. Rotate around to face forward. Take your right hand over your left toes. Walk the left hand around behind you. If possible, it can go behind the blanket so that it's, you've got this resistance to pull the left shoulder back with. Lengthen up through the spine and drop the breath down into the pelvic floor. Again, give careful consideration to the fact that you're paying attention to something so important and so foundational as the pelvic floor is a reparative process for giving attention to that which needed your attention in your adult life and that which may have needed attention when you were in your growing and developing years. So the consistency that you now give attention with is very important. Bring the side bend into this. So start placing your right forearm on your right inner thigh, side bend to your right, roll the chest open, roll your left shoulder back. And then raise your left arm up overhead to add to the side bend. Press the left inner thigh long and the left knee down. Making the, the breath and the attention that you're giving more loving, more grounded, more patient. And then exhale, rise up to your seat and come back to the twist. And rotate around to face forward. Okay. Good morning to the pelvic floor and the pelvic basin. Remember that the first chakra is that place where we sense our inherent connection to all that is, to everyone and everything. 
And it's a time in our life when we needed to have assurance, consistency, attention, just enough assurance, just enough consistency, just enough attention. Not 100% and not perfect, but enough to have a sense that we're being welcomed here and that we belong. The second chakra is where we sense our um, aliveness coming on. Our senses are like, whoa, here's a world to explore. And it's fun to have that be met by other people in our developing years. And it's also helpful to consider those senses then, at this stage in our lives, we're trying to have riverbanks for the senses so that we aren't just hither and tither on craving, grasping, aversion, and resistance. And that moves us up to the third chakra where we can start to have a sense of our personal purpose, our personal contribution. What is that going to be? How will we manifest a healthy sense of self here? And that moves us up to the fourth chakra where we, we have less sense of the individual self as our priority and more of a sense of the interpersonal and the communing self as our priority. So let's put aside what you don't need to come up to standing please and into Uttanasana. And having been where you were with your little blanket roll, when you come to your Uttanasana, notice what it's like at the, the back sides of the sacrum and the outer hips, right around where the greater trochanters are, where the tailbone and the sitting bones are. As you inhale, glide your heart and your spine forward. And then exhale for a deep bow to the legs and notice the front hemisphere of the pelvic floor during the exhale. One more time, inhale, glide forward. Notice the back of the pelvic floor, the back of the spine, even the back of the heart. And exhale for a deep bow. Please shift your hands to your hips, rise up to standing and let's go heel toe, heel toe out to the jazz dance warm up pose. Come on down. And in the jazz dance warm up pose this morning, I'm going to ask you to go side to side. And at first, when you're going side to side, keep the heels grounded. And when you're going side to side, see if you can sense how the shape of the pelvic floor is also changing as you're going side to side. Use the breath to coordinate the pace of your movement, whether that's Three rocks to the left and right for the inhale and three for the exhale. Maybe your breath is slower or your movements are slower. Now, as you are going side to side, begin to lift the heel of the leg you're going towards. And then place it down as you transition, lift the heel of the leg you're going towards. You're adding a little more need for support or tone on that hip and that side of the pelvic floor. You can keep the arm on that side strong. So as you're gliding over, from your hand to your shoulder, this is steady. Pick up the heel, there you go. And take it to the right, please. Lift the right heel. Let the upper inner right thigh drop a little bit, but keep the hamstring and the pelvic floor tone. And then glide across. Press into your left knee with your left hand. Pick up the left heel. Yeah. And in that lift, keep the inner left thigh it's dropping down, but the hamstring tone. And go to the right one more time, please. And then go to the left one more time. 
So that's going to require foot stability and strength, hamstring support, pelvic floor support, and inner thigh elasticity. Let's come back to the jazz dance warm up pose. Turn your left hand in and twist to your right. You straighten both arms so you are using the full strength of the arms and the full length of the inner thighs. Come back to center, twist to your left. Rotate back to center, press down and rise up to standing. Let's go heel toe, heel toe in. Come to mountain pose. I'm not going to change my camera angle because we're going to go back down. So in mountain pose, just pause as you can to feel what's happening now. And momentarily, if you could picture the canvas on which the painting is painted. So the silence over which your thoughts are moving, the consciousness over which your own life is unfolding. Now bend the knees and we'll go heel toe, heel toe back out. This time as you come down, we're going to gaze forward and we're going to use Bastrika to help charge up the belly. So Bastrika is a strong exhale out through the mouth and then we'll have an inhale. We'll rise up for the inhale and then we'll come forward to a forward bend for the exhale. Okay, let's begin. Exhale. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, bow forward to Prasarata Padottanasana. Notice what your breath next does, what the breath that breathes you is able to do here. And then place your hands on your hips, rise up to standing, return to your jazz dance warm up pose, place your gaze on the floor or the ground ahead of you some. And now for Kapalabhati, so this is through the nose, check and see that you can keep some tone of the pelvic floor so it should not feel like it's receiving the sort of brunt of each exhale, but rather that it's tone like the tone you have on a drum that you're making a beautiful sound from. Exhale. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, come forward and down, making the feet parallel. Come back down to Prasarata Padatanasana. And notice again how the breath that wants to breathe you then moves what is happening.
Particularly notice what is happening when you go to the inhale to silence and the exhale silence. What is happening there? Reach back around the fall of your back now and interlace your fingers, please, and give a good strong squeeze of the shoulders and the shoulder blades behind you. Energize your legs and as you inhale, from the back of the pelvic floor, the back of the spine, the back of the heart, raise your torso halfway up. And then exhale for a deep bow towards your legs and deep means whatever your physical capacity is while completing the exhalation. Inhale, lift and glide forward, broaden the back of the body. And exhale for a bow towards the legs, releasing the exhale completely. Twice more. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale to deeply bow, noticing the silence at the base of the exhale. Listening for that silence even during the inhale. Do you sense the breath? But the silence is larger than the movement of the breath. Return your hands to your hips. Rise up to stand. And then step your feet heel toe, heel toe together. Mountain pose. In mountain pose, you can close the eyes momentarily. And then please turn to the front of your yoga mat or Surya Namaskar. In Surya Namaskar this morning, we're gonna be using Anjane Asana. Let me just get my blanket for my knees. This is a very <laughs> bumpy and very firm um, brick path. So I encourage you to also have padding if you need it. And then step forward Come to mountain pose to begin. Sorry, Namaskar. I know you can't see my head. <laughs> I'm not that tall, but you can't see it there. All right, we'll go with that. Okay. So join your palms together at your heart. And come into the Ujjayi breath. With your inhale, slide the hands down, turn your palms forward and pause right there, roll the shoulders back. Now with this inhale, raise from the low belly and the pelvis, mid torso and up into the heart. So all three regions of the torso and gaze up. And then exhale, bow forward and come down to Uttanasana. Inhale, glide forward through your heart. Exhale, take your left foot back and touch the left knee down. When you first inhale, just come upright with the torso. You can put your hands like we did yesterday against your knee here. And drop the breath down into the pelvis, right, right into the pelvic basin. So what is happening there now? Now take the arms out like we did in mountain pose. Turn your palms face forward, roll the shoulders back. And let's inhale first third, middle third, upper third of the breath. And exhale, wide circle, come forward and down. Touch the two blocks, please. And like yesterday's practice, inhale, straighten, both legs lift the toes of your right foot. And exhale, bend your right knee deeply, come to the basic lunge. Inhale, straighten both legs, lift the toes of your right foot. 
and exhale, return to the basic lunge. Try to sense how much support you can provide from your feet to your pelvis. Once more, inhale, glide back, raise the toes of your right foot. Exhale, glide forward. Place the left block for your left fingertips and please twist to your right, breathe in. And then exhale, return, touching the blocks. You can make them symmetrical once again. And inhale, step backwards, downward facing dog pose. Exhale, forward to plank pose. Okay, inhale to cow pose. And exhale, glide your hips forward to seal pose. And exhale up to plank. And inhale, downward facing dog pose. Exhale, right foot forward. And left, oh, sorry, left foot forward. Sorry about that. I'm not mirroring because I don't have a mirror to give you. Left foot forward, right knee down. Take your hands to your front knee and press down. Breathe into the low pelvis and the belly. Let's take the arms out to the side, turn your palms forward. And then inhale, low third middle third, the upper third. And exhale, make a wide circle of the arms. As you touch the two blocks, curl the right toes under and straighten your right leg. Straighten your left leg, raise the toes of your left foot. Exhale, glide deeply forward to the basic lunge. Inhale, glide back and try to notice the two hemispheres of the pelvic floor have really different positions right now, different responsibilities. So as you exhale to glide forward, more weight bearing into your left leg and the left thigh is in flexion. As you inhale to glide back, your right hip goes into flexion. But when you come forward in the basic lunge, the right hip and thigh go into extension together. So keeping that steady, place the block for your right hand where you'd like it to be, and please twist to your left. While breathing in and breathing out. And exhale, lower down, place the two blocks again as you like them for Uttanasana, and please inhale, step forward with your right foot and exhale, bow deeply towards the legs. Inhale, rise up, upward hands pose. And exhale, hands to the heart. Now the pelvic floor is once again symmetrical and so is most of the entire body, except for your particular asymmetry. Let's inhale, take the hands down, turn your palms forward. Notice the shoulders and the shoulder blades. Connect from the sacrum to the tailbone. And then inhale, first third of the breath, middle third, upper third. And exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, glide forward through the heart. Exhale, left toes back and left knee down. Okay. Rise up again so the torso is coming more or less vertical. Connect with the tailbone and the sacrum. 
Turn your palms face forward. Connect with the shoulder blades. Now in the middle of the heart and the sacrum in this mid back region, don't just over squeeze. Remember the Charmin commercial, you're not squeezing the Charmin right now. So instead, keep this really broad through there. And then inhale first third, middle third, upper third. And with your exhale, now sweep the arms wide. And this time, cross your left elbow over your right knee. Join your palms together in Anjali Mudra. And as you widen the elbows apart, twist your heart to the right. And even as you're twisting, see if you can have a little consideration for the shape of the pelvic floor. The right leg is deeply in flexion. And the left leg is deeply in extension. Now let's exhale, bring the fingertips around and inhale, straighten both legs, curl the toes of your right foot up from the floor. Press into both hands and, and arms firmly and step up and through to one-legged dog pose. Raise your right leg behind you. And then come forward to plank pose. Inhale to cow pose. Let's exhale to cat pose. Inhale to cow. And exhale, glide forward to seal pose. Exhale to plank pose. And inhale, downward facing dog pose. Okay, left foot forward, right knee down. Bring your torso upright. Connect from the sacrum to the tailbone. From the hands to the shoulder blades. Keeping the mid torso expansive, let's breathe lower, middle and upper thirds of the breath. And then exhale, come across with your right elbow over your left thigh. Join your hands together in Anjali Mudra. And widen the elbows apart. And consider it again, the two very different shapes, the hemispheres of the pelvic floor. The left leg is in deep flexion. The right leg is in deep extension. And when you next exhale, bring your fingers around to touch the two blocks. In this position, you can straighten the elbows in preparation for, but you can imagine we're gonna glide right through, straightening both legs, pick up the toes of the left foot, make the palms flat, and then step over your blanket and raise your left leg. Come forward to plank.
Inhale to cow pose. Exhale to cat pose. Inhale to cow pose. And then come forward to seal pose. And plank pose. Downward facing dog pose. Awkward foot forward, second foot forward, Uttanasana. And then inhale, rise up, Ordha Hastasana. And hand to the heart, Anjali Mudra. And come again to mountain pose. So you're just standing steady. You can have the palms at the heart if you like. You can also do arms down by the sides of the waist. Listen for the silence in the pauses of the breath, the silence that is larger than the breath itself. like the canvas on which the painting is portrayed. Listen for that within you, it's in your, your heart that we can acknowledge the painting on which, the, can, the canvas on which the painting is being painted, that part of the heart that is capable of sensing that. So we're going to come down to the Z formation that we've been playing with the last couple of days. Let me make sure I have enough. Um, I don't want to be on the bricks with my ankles. So when we come to the Z formation, let's go to the right side first. Oh, I'll change the angle of the camera so you can see better. So in the Z formation, some of you are gonna find that when you sit to the, let me go to my, now I'll mirror you again. So this will be my right. When you go to the right, some of you are gonna find that as you sit down, you feel like you're falling over to the side. In that case, put a blanket under the right hip. So your pelvis is gonna be more or less level. And I'd like you to have the two blocks like we had a few days ago. And put one to the right and one in front here. Good, yeah. Now the left leg is gonna be internally rotated. That's the nature of the position. The right leg is externally rotated. So see if you can sense again at the pelvic floor, there is a difference. I'll take the block with your left hand and cross over to the right side. Press into your right hand and arm to support the twist of your heart to the right. For now, we are keeping the left hip more or less equal with the right hip. So if you're sitting up on the blanket under your right hip, you wanna sense that you've got the pelvis level. If you don't have a blanket, that you still have a sense the pelvis right now is level. And then start sliding the left hand and the left block forward, but keep the right hand and right shoulder stable. So 
with a twist of the heart to the right is dependent on the flexibility you have in your thoracic spine. There's one more little glide forward with the left hand and the left arm. Keep the right arm straight. I know that's not easy for all of us. Now press firmly into your right arm, raise your hips up and press firmly into your right shin and your right knee. And raise the left arm. Make the right arm really steady so you're coming into the heart. Because the block is now behind you, that's how it, it started. You can make a little side bend and a little back bend. Press the left hip forward. And then as you exhale, keep the legs lifted as they are, the hips lifted, and lower the left hand down. Reach towards its block. Then begin to descend your hips backwards. Keep the right arm strong. Try touching the hips down to be more or less equal. And then return to center and switch your Z position to the other side. And when you take your seat, the right leg is going to be internally rotated. The left leg is externally rotated. Place your right hand in front, left hand on the side. You might be coming into awareness that your pelvic floor is not symmetrical and neither is your capacity. Let's say that one leg rotates internally better than the other or vice versa. One goes externally better. You try to sense what is happening for yourself now. Now keeping the left arm strong, take the block with your right hand and come over. Now just having added this twist, we want the twist to focus in the heart this morning. We say in yoga that there is an unconditioned experience of the heart. These, we call them Brahma Viharas. The Brahma Viharas like compassion or loving kindness, they're, they're offered unconditionally. And so as you're twisting in the heart, just listen for the flexibility you have there in your, in your structural body. And notice the kind of attention that you're giving to yourself right now. And slide the right hand and the right block forward. Knowing that the chakras are a developmental process, we don't just come automatically to the heart and the chakras. We start from the first, second we go upwards, third and fourth. Now press firmly into your left hand, raise your hips up, press your left shin and your left knee down and sweep your right arm past your right ear. The block under your left hand is a little bit behind you so you can add a tiny back bend. Press your right hip forward. And then exhale and glide down. Now as the right hand reaches for the block, then lower your hips down. Keep the left arm strong. It's like you're coming into your twist in reverse steps there. 
and then rotate back around to face forward. Reach for your little blanket roll. Here you have it. <laughs> and come to Baddha Konasana, please. We have the two blocks. Baddha Konasana. Go ahead and hold on to your feet and please come forward. So when you're returning to Baddha Konasana here, think about returning to the pelvic floor for a few moments. So we can reflect today, we can reflect on like, what is the nature of that unconditional heart? That like the canvas is there, it's open, it's receptive, it's not having expectations. The canvas is available to the paint. The silence allows the inhale and the exhale to, to move through. The sky is welcoming the bird song right now. So what is the nature of this unconditional heart? And how can we know it from a place of integration, starting from the first chakra, second, and so on? Not just landing in it um, because we're hopeful and optimistic and not leaping over the chakras below. Now, please rise up to sitting. And I'd like you to come to your Shavasana, please. Please set yourself in your position for Shavasana. You can get comfortable there. I may go inside for my sun hat. <laughs> really nice to feel the sun. It's hard to see though. Please come to your Shavasana. Make it really comfortable. So the first chakra is for stability, assurance, Groundedness, those are our inherent needs, safety and connection at the first chakra. Our life lesson there includes many life lessons, but one includes sensing that our welfare and the welfare of everything else and everyone else is tied together. We are intrinsically a part of the whole. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. Well, from the very base of the pelvis, pelvic floor to deeply relax.
the second chakra, we have this innate need here for adventure and exploration, for our senses to help us learn about the world and our place in it. One of our yogic imperatives at the second chakra is to wisely chaperone our senses so that we aren't compelled to live from the unmet needs, unacknowledged, yet pulling the strings of the marionette hither and thither. Your senses and your vitality are interconnected. Wum, 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 Invite the deep inner belly to be profoundly relaxed. Life is flowing towards your senses. Vitality wants to move through you. In the third chakra, we have the element of fire. And our intrinsic needs here are for differentiation, coming to know who we are, our unique bobbling awe, coming to know who we are, having a sense of our personal contribution. And here we must practice discernment so we see and understand the shadow of human nature and also its innate potential. Ram, 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 ram. Ram, 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 Ram. In the heart, we rise beyond the personal to the transpersonal. Sensing the space in which sound is happening. The breath that is breathing us all. The silence through which the music is played. the canvas on which the painting is portrayed. Of the unconditional nature of the heart. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum.
Invite your heart to deeply relax. Invite yourself to sense this unconditional heart that is in you. Of course, you also have the personal journey of your life, the places where your heart has some inner work to do. But sense that unconditional heart. And when you're ready to, I'd like you to take a little deeper breath and start sensing a transition from Shavasana up to sit. When you return to your seat, we will use the sounds of the chakras together. So as you come up, you can place your hands like this out over the knees. Let's imagine that from the fourth chakra, so take your right hand like this and imagine from the fourth chakra, from the essence here, that is that unconditional regard, that unconditional love and receptivity, you could gaze down at each of the other chakras and the work that you know you have to do there, but you would provide that offering from a place of compassionate holding. So just imagining that, now come down to the base chakra. The sound is lum. Lum, lum. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. And bring the right hand up to the heart from the fourth chakra, gazing at the second chakra, the unmet needs. You place your fingers and thumbs. Wum, 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 wum. Wum, wum. Wum, 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 wum.
And then fourth chakra mudra again. And offering to the third chakra. Place the hands like a fish, as Debu says. Bram, 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 bram. Ram, 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 Ram. 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 And up to the fourth chakra. Yum, 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 yum. 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 And raising your left hand to your right. May this shared heart, this shared compassion amongst us, may it provide us the individual courage to offer this compassion at the first, second, and third issues that we are facing, our personal work. May it also provide us the courage of compassion for each other particularly those whom we don't understand, those who seem like other. We'll chant Om Shanti together, please. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much everyone. Thank you for being here. Namaste.